Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to a macroeconomics video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the economics of negative interest rates and assess whether this is a sustainable form of monetary policy for central banks in some countries at risk of deflation. So a negative interest rate policy, or NERP for short, easy to remember, that happens when a country's central bank such as the Bank of England or the Federal Reserve, lowers the nominal monetary policy interest rate below zero. In other words, commercial banks have to pay uh, money to the central bank to lodge some of their savings balances in an account with their national central bank. It's important to make a distinction between nominal and real interest rates when discussing negative interest rate policy. So the real interest rates on savings or loans can be negative uh, if the nominal interest rate, for example, on, on savings, is below the rate of inflation. So let's say your savings account is paying 1% interest per year, but inflation is 3%. Well, the nominal interest rate is positive, only just, but it's positive, but the real interest rate would be minus 2%. So the real interest rate can become negative even if nominal interest rates are positive. What we're seeing in some countries is the nominal or the money rate of interest falling below zero. And here are some topical examples. In Europe and Japan, central banks in recent times have started to experiment with negative interest rates, negative interest rates to stimulate their country's economy. Uh, Japan is a good example. Sweden has just actually finished a five-year experiment with negative rates. Denmark, minus 0.75%. Switzerland, though, is similar. The European Central Bank has dallied with negative rates. Currently, their main policy rate is at zero. And there are also some negative interest rates in the market for sovereign bonds, including in Switzerland and in Germany. So in Switzerland, here's the interbank offer rate, the rate of interest the banks lend between themselves. And as you can see, since 2015, that interest rate has been negative. The y-axis ranges there from minus 0.72% to minus 0.92%. Interest rates negative in Switzerland. In Denmark, they, uh, they started a negative interest rate policy in 2015, in part because of fears of deflation, uh, perhaps caused by a strong exchange rate. Indeed, in Denmark... Imagine a mortgage that pays you the interest. Uh, here's an example of a Financial Times report from August 2019 where a Danish lender has become the first to impose negative interest rates on customer deposits. That's particularly for people with deposits of over a million dollars and also a, a negative interest rate on a mortgage. The bank apparently could fund the mortgage by selling a bond at minus 0.5% passing that negative rate to the home buyer, but making some money on, on a mortgage fee. So they would charge a fee for arranging the loan. But we're living in topsy-turvy times when you have a mortgage that pays you the interest, as we've seen in Denmark. Sweden has had for several years a negative interest rate policy, but they've brought an end to that uh, in December of 2019, the Riksbank in Sweden, the world's oldest central bank, uh, lifted their main policy interest rate, can you see here, from minus 0.25% uh, to zero, ending the experiment with negative interest rate policies, as the chart shows. And in Germany, as uh, in recent times, the yield on bonds, in this case a 10-year bond, uh, has become negative. Now, when bond yields... That's the yield on government debt. When bond yields become negative, then the bond investor, the person buying the bond, is effectively paying for the safety of the investment. Uh, they're hoping to get most of their money back. It's almost like a form of insurance. Or, of course, the buyer might hope to sell the bond at a profit before the bond matures. As of February 2020, about 20% of the global bond market is currently trading at negative yields. Amazing times. So let's take a look at why some countries are using negative interest rates and then we'll evaluate. So ideally about five points on each. 
So what are the main aims of a negative interest rate policy or NERP? The first one is to get the banks to lend. If, uh, if they're having to pay interest on money held with the central bank, uh, then it's an incentive for banks, in fact, to use some of that surplus money to lend to businesses and households where they can achieve a positive rate of interest. The second point is to get people, get people, get households and consumers to spend, uh, particularly if the nominal interest rate on savings balances becomes negative. So the idea is to give consumers, households, an incentive to spend money rather than leave it in their bank accounts where the value would be eroded by inflation and indeed the interest rate could be negative. A third reason is perhaps to encourage governments to borrow. If you have very low bond yields, as we've seen in Germany, is this the moment, is this the opportunity for the government to, to use fiscal policy to invest? For example, the UK government is thinking about uh, lifting quite significantly the amount they, they borrow to invest in transport infrastructure and environmental projects, for example. The fourth point is that negative nominal interest rates are designed, hopefully, to bring about a reduction in the real interest rate in the economy. Uh, that's particularly the case for countries that be are very close to deflation. And if the real interest rate goes down, then hopefully planned investment by businesses will rise and that of course could cause an outward shift of aggregate demand. Now the final point on this slide is is crucial, it's really important and it's something that students oftentimes miss out. Negative interest rates, negative interest rates are partly designed to cause an outflow of hot money thereby therefore causing a depreciation in the external value of a country's exchange rates. And that, of course, could stimulate the price competitiveness of our export sectors. So negative interest rates are really designed as a stimulatory policy, moving away from conventional interest rate policy and moving into, into negative territory. However, you'll know, of course, that uh, the highest marks come from evaluation. So here are six evaluation points uh, suggesting that this strategy may not be sustainable and may not be very effective indeed may lead to some unintended damaging consequences the first is to do with banks that if you if you have negative interest rates that's going to cut uh, the, the profitability for banks by reducing the interest rate margin between what banks pay to their savers and what they can charge on their loans so typically banks may make less profit from lending and they may be less willing to lend. So that could have an, an unintended consequence. Uh, typically what banks do is if they can't charge a high interest rate on loans, they'll raise the fee that they charge for facilitating a new loan. Um, secondly, uh, a negative rate if the yield on bonds, for example, if the rate of interest on loans goes down, that could cause banks and other investors to take higher risk in search of better returns, in search of yield. So perhaps banks will start putting their money into higher risk activities rather than solid lending to businesses. And that, some economists fear, could lead to a future asset price bubble in property, in real estate, in, in commodities and, and housing. Third point, if the yield on debt is very low, it could actually make it harder for the government of a different country to issue new debt because if yields are negative, the return on investment is not particularly high. Uh, interest rates on deposits, if the rate of interest on savings deposits becomes negative, well, households and businesses with spare money <coughs> might decide instead of putting money on deposit in a bank, they might opt to hoard cash rather than spending on uh, and, and uh, investing. Indeed, uh, some people might, if they receive a cheque, let's say for £10,000, they might decide, well, I, I, instead of putting it into my account where I'm going to get a negative rate of interest, I might decide just to delay cashing a cheque because uh, that way, you know, um, I, I get the benefit. Uh, why should I pay the penalty of cashing a cheque early? A really crucial point is to do with pensions and insurance companies. If pension funds start seeing a big fall in the interest rates they're getting on the money they invest the yields are close to zero or below, then they might decide to cut the pensions they pay out because they can't afford to pay all those long-term liabilities. Now, if pensions go down, 
monthly pension income, many people may have to delay their retirement and perhaps work until they're older, which would reduce the number of new jobs uh, for people uh, entering the labour market who are replacing older workers who've retired. And the other point is a wider point that uh, some economists fear that this decade or more of very low, even negative interest rates might be leading to uh, the survival of zombie firms, firms that would otherwise have gone to the wall, but they're kept alive by just being able to roll over debt using low interest rates. I was reading a article recently, if you go back to point one, that European banks say they've paid over 25 billion euros in negative rates to the European Central Bank since it cut rates below zero back in 2014. So there's a hint there that banks are suffering a fall in profits, which of course makes it less likely they'll be able to lend out in the future. Sales of safes have soared in some countries. So if we see uh, this is a German safe maker, and they reckon their sales have increased by about 30% in the last three or four years, linking it to negative interest rate policies. Here's an article in The Guardian uh, suggesting that zombie firms, firms of the living dead, are a drag on the economy. A number of underperforming zombie firms are creating a major drag, threatening to exacerbate a future downturn, kept alive by this low interest rate uh, policy. And I'll leave the last word in this slide to the eminent Professor Kenneth Rogoff. Uh, he says on negative interest rates, you just don't do this on a normal sunny day. We live in unusual times when central banks are, are thinking about negative, negative interest rates as a monetary policy option. Okay, hopefully you found that useful and, uh, and relevant to your studies. Thank you.